as good as an amazing cook as you are, it's not going to be that turkey that people remember. It won't even be the toys that you give. It'll be the peace, those moments of peace between family members where you truly express your heart for each other and worship God. And that, I believe, is the area that the devil wants to attack and disrupt this holiday season where we've got so much going on that it causes a disruption in your family. So glad y'all are here today. Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, thank you for those that uh, uh, were here last week and contributed to our Blessing Sunday experience. Last Sunday is one of the most fun Sundays of the year. Uh, almost $40,000 was uh, contributed to give away to bless people both services and before last Sunday. And we even were able to uh, do another one last night. We, uh, we had some funds and our chief of police, Sean Ladson, gave us an open door to crash the Moultrie Police Department Christmas party last night. And so uh, I came straight from Michael Murray and Tori Fuller's wedding down at Lob Lolly. And uh, last night we went to the Christmas party at the police station and we filmed the uh, little surprise. We tricked him a little bit. So watch the video from last night. Check this out. I'm Rev from Heritage. Uh, this is Emily, another one of our pastors on our team. And, and this is the time of year we just love to do blessings. So thank you. I want you to know uh, Heritage is behind you. We pray for you. We're here for you. Um, honored to know Chief Lanson, and, and thank you. You're doing an excellent job. So we are proud of our police department. So here's what we want to do tonight. We want to give somebody a $100 Amazon gift card as a special thank you. So we want to, we're going to do a little drawing, and whoever has the winning number gets the gift card. We'll do the drawing. We'll say go. First person to open an envelope and holler out that you have the winning number gets the Amazon $100 gift card. Emily, reach in, draw us out a good one. The winning number is 37. Go! Who's got it? Who's got it? Who's got it? Emily, what have you done? Everybody get the $100 Amazon gift card. We love you guys. God bless you. Merry Christmas. officer in the room received a $100 gift card just to show our appreciation. We had a great time last night. Thank you again. Uh, some lives were transformed as a result of, of your giving and generosity. Uh, so thank you so much. It's just so much fun to give. Um, today, I just want to give you a short word of encouragement as we enter uh, the Christmas celebration. Uh, I want to revisit that passage the students, the, our kids just read a second ago. Look at this out of Luke 2. It says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Like, imagine being a shepherd living on the, out in the field, and the skies open up, and all of a sudden, angels surround you with the glory of God. Now, today, in today's culture, when you think of angels, you think of naked floating babies or something like that. That's not the biblical description of angels anywhere. Every time there's an angel described, it is a powerful warrior. So if you can imagine the skies open up and appear these mighty angels, uh, you would be terrified as well. So the angel said, uh, do not be afraid. I bring you some good news that will cause great joy for all the people today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in and lying in a manger. Now, if you come to our Christmas Eve gathering Tuesday evening, I'll share with you the significance of that verse right there, why that was such a really amazing sign for them. Uh, that's Tuesday. But goes, it goes on to say, Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Now, if you're like me, uh, you might read this passage and think, Okay, God, where's all the peace? 
I can look around the world and it's broken and in my own life there's chaos. Where's the peace? Well, you will notice God does not promise here that there will be peace on earth. He promises on earth there will be peace. And there's a difference. Let me share that with you now. How many of you, when you enter the Christmas holidays, how many of you, like me, have this picture in your mind of what you would like your family gathering to look like? Like for me, it's something like this. Like that's all I want. Just that moment where we're just all loving each other and sharing gifts with one another. I think I've got another example. That's all I want. Just everybody getting along. A Norman Rockwell moment where it's just, it's perfect. Anybody ever had that moment around Christmas before? Anybody ever had one of those moments? I have not, so I'm jealous if you have. It has never worked out that way in my house. In fact, some of you probably were fussing and yelling at each other on the way to church today. Can I get a little witness? Can I get a little amen? All right. Some of you ain't even talking. It's like, I ain't ready. I ain't ready to laugh about it. You know what you said. You know what you did. Like, it just seems like we enter the holidays looking to capture this moment, and oh my goodness, I'm going to tell you about our Christmas celebration two nights ago. True story, not making this up. Uh, our tradition is when the kids get out of school for Christmas break, that first night we gather together and have, we let them dig into their stockings. We just kick off the Christmas holiday season with a family get together and, and all the kids get to uh, uh, dig into their stocking. Well, we gather around, and that's the image I had in my head is we're gonna gather around, we're gonna sing Christmas carols and love on each other and laugh and smile and it's gonna be beautiful and memorable and we're gonna cry because we love each other so much. And what actually happened was we got together and if you have four boys like we do, uh, I'm not gonna explain what happened. I'll just let you connect the dots, but we'll just say a strange odor began to fill the room um, that had us all semi-gagging at the moment, uh, and we're just like, huh, huh. and I have one son who in particular has a really bad gag reflex, so the more they talked about what had just transpired, everyone, my son turns around, turns back around, and projectile vomits all over all of us and all the stockings. Everyone scatters to different rooms. We're all in a corner just... Mm, mm. Can I see a picture of that again? That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. I'm still chasing that moment right there. At the Bowen house, we do it differently. We puke on each other. So I've often wondered, God, you promised to give us peace. Where's the peace? And I've learned it's not, it's not in those moments. Don't chase those. If you happen to get one of those moments, take a picture because it ain't going to last but a few seconds, all right? Around the holidays, it's a time where if you're grieving, the grief is strong and the pressure is high and it just sort of highlights your financial pressures and relationship strains and all. And hey, let's just be honest, uh, not many of us are able to Walk in those kinds of moments. However, today I want to encourage you because peace is available to you, but it's not going to be found in those moments. Uh, let me remind you of a story. If you grew up in church, this story might be familiar to you. There was a family that Jesus really loved. Uh, it was, a, it was a, some siblings named Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and uh, Jesus paid them for a visit. And here's what it says in Luke 10. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened opened her home to him. She had a sister, Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. And she came to Jesus and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister left me to do the work all by myself? Tell her to help me. Anybody had one of those moments over the holidays yet? Anybody planning on having one of those moments where... All the mamas out there, you know what I'm talking about. I, I hope you're enjoying your relaxation in front of the TV while I'm in here cooking supper and taking out the trash and feeding the kids. Jesus, can you tell him to get off his tail and help me a little bit? And that was one of those kinds of moments. 
Now, actually, Martha gets a bad rap here, but you need to understand, especially in, in our culture too, but in Jesus' culture, hospitality was huge. Like, that's how you express love, by the, by the way you welcome people into your home and fed them and cared for them. Martha had the gift of hospitality. We see her on multiple occasions, and almost every time it says she is serving the people. That's her gift. She's express. However, she got distracted a little bit, and that's what I want to encourage you today, not to be distracted this holiday season, because it can slip in with you as well. And this is how uh, uh, Jesus responded to her. She said, oh, Martha, Martha, uh, you're worried and upset about many things. There's a lot going on. You're worried about uh, the, the, the centerpiece on the table. You're worried about the decorations. You're worried about uh, not only a, 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 a seven-course meal, but all the, 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 the desserts and all the, uh, like, you're, there's so much to worry about. Martha, these are good things. These are okay. But that's not what it's about. Like, those things are fine, but we don't need all that. I promise you, those aren't the things that will be remembered. Jesus says, in fact, really only one thing. One thing. And that's you come together and remember what this is about. Mary has chosen what's better and it won't be taken from her. Like what we're after really is a moment that we'll remember. And let me tell you, as good as an amazing cook as you are, it's not going to be that turkey that people remember. It won't even be the toys that you give. It'll be the peace, those moments of peace between family members where you truly express your heart for each other and worship God. And that, I believe, is the area that the devil wants to attack and disrupt this holiday season where we've got so much going on that it causes a disruption in your family dynamic. And let me just remind you as you enter this season, a bad attitude kills a good act. Uh, you can be doing all the right things and kill it with a bad attitude. <laughs> Like the moment you feel yourself slipping into that place of anger, resentment, stress, anxiety, like, it, like stop. Because anything you do past that, it's not going to be worth it. It's not going to be remembered or it'll be remembered for the wrong reason. You can have a perfect meal and if you're all sitting around in awkward silence because of the fight that just broke out, that meal's not going to be remembered for the right reasons. Like it's, it's better to have a, our, our leftovers on Christmas Day with love in the room than the perfect meal with a lot of hostility. So I just, she got distracted, not because of her gift, but she allowed it to take her to a place where there was disunity in her family. And so I want to share with you an amazing event, a true story that happened uh, almost a little over 100 years ago. Um, I find this fascinating. I've studied this through the years. I've, uh, I've heard other people describe it and read books on it. And there's been videos made about it. But in 1914, it was the beginning of World War I. That's when the Great War broke out. Um, and I want to share with you something that has now come to be known as the Christmas Truce of 1914. To my knowledge, it never happened before and has never happened again. In fact, the leaders of the military wanted to make sure it would never happen again. But in this moment, on Christmas Eve on, in 1914 in World War I, it was a remarkable moment. Because World War I got started by the assassination, uh, I believe it was a Hungarian leader. Uh, his name's Franz Ferdinand. And uh, someone you, you probably wouldn't know, but uh, people on, uh, from his his country were angry uh, and wanted to retaliate, retaliate, so they declared war on this country, and then this country's allies says, oh, no, you didn't, and so they go to war, and then that country, all those countries' allies, all of, in a matter of a few days, it went from an assassination of a leader to a world war involving multiple countries around the globe, a war that would last for about four years, killing some estimates up to 20 million people, most of of those civilians and that's what happens around the holidays or any time for that matter all it takes is one little event where we respond really poorly next thing you know you've got world war in your family now in the in world war one they had an area known as no man's land in fact i've got a picture of what that would look like 
No man's land you would not enter. Their strategy for doing war was to build trenches and to hunker down in those trenches. And if you got out of the trench and entered into no man's land, you were, it, was, it was a death wish. You were sure to be shot and killed. And no man's land would be just littered with bodies of soldiers trying to move on the opposition. And so they would happen. And let me just give you a little taste of the brutality and chaos that fighting in World War I would have been like. Just watch this snippet of footage. unimaginable to go through that experience but about six months five or six months into world war one all sides had hoped this would be a short-term conflict which of course now we know it would last several years killing millions of people but in the very first christmas something extraordinary happened that has become known as the christmas truce of 1914 it was on christmas eve and there were believers on both sides. And so you had the German army facing the British army. And each one was hunkered down. There would be miles and miles of these trenches. The reason the, uh, the war was so brutal is the strategy of war in those days was just to build these long, dig these long trenches, and your army would just hunker down for protection and just launch grenades and bombs and bullets at the other side. And it would just be this standoff that would last for weeks, months, years, and just so many people would die as a result of it. But the very first Christmas Eve, right in the middle of that chaos with gunfire and everything, all of a sudden, a new sound began to ring out. And this sound was, was portrayed in a little uh, uh, recreation to tell this story. So try to take yourself there and imagine on Christmas Eve this happening. Watch this. the German army began to sing Silent Night in their language and the British army returned and they started singing in unison Silent Night and this gunfire ceased and in fact early the next morning members of the German army took a huge gamble a huge risk it's early Christmas morning in 1914 in the middle of World War I and one of them stepped out of their bunker and just began to wave their hand and just say Happy Christmas Happy Christmas. And of course, both sides are freaking out because they don't know what's going to happen. And they're like, is this a trick? Are they going to shoot us? Do we shoot him? What's going on? And little, a couple more stood out. Next thing you know, both sides began to step out and walk toward each other. And on Christmas morning, in the middle of World War I, they came together, shook hands, wished each other a Merry Christmas, and got to know each other in that moment. And something amazing happened. They began to exchange gifts with one another, any snacks that they had on hand. One of them was a barber, and he began to give haircuts to a member of the opposing army. In fact, we even have a pic pictures were taken. They even grabbed a soccer ball and started playing soccer together, and soldiers would write in their diaries and send letters home describing this morning like you won't I can't believe what is happening I, it, it's like a dream and for that day in 1914 
They were no longer divided by war, but they became brothers in the body of Christ. And the peace that came to earth invaded that moment. And just moments prior, they were killing each other. But in this moment, they were worshiping together. And you know what happened? At the end of that day, they retreated back to their bunkers. And all of this was to the great dismay of their leaders, their officers who were not happy about it. In fact, one young soldier said, uh, just was cursing the German army, just saying, have you ha do you have no German pride in you whatsoever? That, that soldier's name was Adolf Hitler, by the way. And in that moment, when it was time to resume fighting, guess what? They couldn't do it. They couldn't shoot at each other anymore. And here are the leaders demanding them, fight, fight. It's my brothers. What would ultimately happen was they, would, they had to send all of those soldiers to other parts of the war because they realized once you stop and get to know your enemy, it's hard to hate them. You think there's a lesson for us to learn in this? Today, I want to pray for you because I assure you, I know just based off of first service and the scores of people who came to me and said, that's exactly where our family is. I know there's a lot of you sitting here today and there's turmoil in your family and there are broken relationships and some of you haven't spoken for hours, days, weeks, months, years I promise you there's not as much turmoil between you and that family member as there were between the British and German armies who were firing at each other and killing each other in that moment. So what we need is we need the peace of God to invade this situation. First, we need to recognize why are we fighting to begin with. Well, uh, yes, it takes two to tango. I assure you, they may have been brutal to you. They have may, may have said and done horrible things to you, but it it, the only way that conflict can happen is if you allow it in your heart to breed anger and resentment and, and conflict right back. In fact, in James, it says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from the desires within you? Listen, if you are full of peace and joy and grace and mercy and forgiveness, it's very difficult to get into a fight with you. If I say to you, Scott Mickey, you're just a dog, man. I can't stand you. If he responds like, oh, Brad, you're so crazy. I love you, man. Okay. But if he one-ups me, well, let me tell you who you think you are, little scoundrel. Like, now we got conflict. But if your heart is healed, if your heart is walking in peace and grace and mercy and forgiveness, conflict can't happen. It takes both of us. So God is saying, why do you fight and quarrel? Look inside because it's something in your heart. You desire, to ha you desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you can't get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. Anytime you are involved in conflict or fight, no matter how horrible they have been, it, has, it is attached to something that is out of alignment in your heart. And so what I, call, what I ask of you this holiday season is something that's going to take a whole lot of courage and boldness and humility. But it's found in Matthew chapter 5. And it's to all of us here today. It says, therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and that's what you're doing here today, uh, you're giving God a gift of your time right now. You are here saying, all that's going on, God, we want to stop and worship you. We want to stop and remember what this is about. This passage is speaking to all of us. If you, are at the, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled with them and then come and offer your gift. And this is where it takes incredible courage and boldness and humility. Because it's so easy to say, well, you know what? It's their problem. I don't have a problem with them. They started it. They said this. They did this. They're the one with the problem. If they want to seek forgiveness, I'm here. 
However, that's not what God says to us. God says, listen, they're the ones walking in darkness right now because they're not at the altar giving a gift and worshiping God. They're running the other direction. God's speaking to you because you are the ones that are sensitive to His Spirit. He says, it may not even be your problem. In fact, if God brings to mind someone who has an offense with you, He doesn't even say, if God reminds you of that offense you're carrying. No. He says, if God reminds you of someone with an offense with you, you, child of God, you, daughter of God, son of God, you are the one who is carrying around that peace on earth. You are the one that he is asking to go quickly, go quickly and seek reconciliation. I can't promise how they're going to respond, but the charge is on us to walk in what the Bible calls the ministry of reconciliation. Because just like World War I, what happens in our culture is we hunker down in our trenches And we just launch missiles at each other. And somebody throws a bomb at us, and it hurts, and it stings, so we throw one right back. And it goes on and on and on, and all that's left is the carnage in no man's land. Sooner or later, somebody has to risk getting shot by stepping up into no man's land, saying, I love you. Merry Christmas. Forgive me. I want relationship. And it's not an easy thing to do. But I promise you, if God heals some of those relationships this Christmas, it doesn't matter how good the meal was or how bad the meal was. This will be the Christmas you remember for the rest of your life. I want to pray for you. How many of you, and it may be a lot of you, how many of you, just as we've been talking this morning, how many of you would say there is someone in your life right now that God's bringing to mind and there's conflict and turmoil? Just raise your hand if you don't mind. I want to, I'm not going to ask for details or name or anything like that. A lot of hands for this. I want to pray for you and this miracle. See, Jesus brings peace to a situation he brings peace to war the war rages on listen you are you are righteous not because you do right things you are righteous because Jesus is righteous and he covers us with his righteousness you are holy not because you do holy things you are holy because Jesus is holy and he covers us with his holiness and you are pure Not because you do pure things, but because Jesus is pure and he covers us with his purity. And you can have peace this Christmas in your home and in your heart, not because circumstances are peaceful, but because he is peace. And in him we have peace. And even when all of life is going to hell and things are not at all the way you want it, His peace is available to you, and He will bring peace to earth. He will bring peace to your life. And I want to pray for you and your family members right now. And then we're just going to take a minute and just worship the name of Jesus. He is the gift to us. God wrapped Him up for us in swaddling clothes, and He presented Him to all of us. And we're going to celebrate the peace that has come to earth. And so I'm, I'm with you today. My heart is heavy over circumstances in our family. And here's where God's had me this week. In Philippians, it says, do not be anxious about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. But by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then it says, the peace of God will be with you. Here's where I'm at. It's been my prayer all week. God, I don't know how to give this to you with thanksgiving. Like my heart is heavy. And God, I'm going to present this to you. But it is very difficult when things are not going anything close to the way you'd like them to. It's very difficult to give them to God with thanksgiving. 
So I'm saying, God, you have to show me how to pray this prayer with thanksgiving because right now my eyes don't see the outcome. So I invite you to join me in that journey, that quest to learn how to pray through tough circumstances with a spirit of thankfulness. So I'm going to do my best to pray for you the way I'm learning to pray myself. And so I want to pray for that family member. Father, thank you for your gift of peace on this earth. Thank you that you bring bring peace to the wars in our life, to the chaos. God, you've told us in this world there will be trouble. We are here like sheep among wolves. This is a broken world. Father, you've promised to be with us in the storm, with us in the chaos. You said, do not let your heart be troubled, for you have overcome the world. So, Father, I pray for these relationships that are severed and broken. I pray for parents and children that have not spoken for months, even years, God. I was talking with a brother this week who was just with tears running down his face. He said, my son hasn't spoken to me in years. He told me, never talk to me again. He says, I don't want to die knowing we never reconciled. God, I pray for your Holy Spirit to invade those situations right now, God. Father, I pray for those uh, men and women, sons and daughters that are running from you, carrying unforgiveness and bitterness God I pray you break through you penetrate through that bitterness and unforgiveness now God would you melt hearts would you woo your children back to you I pray for the ministry of reconciliation to be released into this body God I pray for phone calls to happen today where with a tenderness even though it's been attempted time and time again would today be the day that the words do not fall on deaf ears But God, you would bring mothers and sons, mothers and daughters, fathers, sons, fathers and daughters, husbands and wives, brothers and sisters, back together again with unity, with love, unconditional, with forgiveness, God. Father, we pray against bitterness and blinders and anger and unforgiveness. We come against it in Jesus' name and we release the ministry of reconciliation into the families in this room. Give them peace, God, in the storm. Peace in the battle. Peace in the war, God. Do what only you can do. And may this Christmas be the one we look back on and say, oh, look what God has done. Look what he did in our home. Look what he did in our family. Jesus, we lift you up. You are our hope. You are our peace. You are our salvation. Jesus, we love you. And we worship you now. Come on, church. Let's turn our hearts to him and lift up the King of Kings.